Hi everyone, this is Mansi Bhappar. Thanks for joining this webinar. In this webinar, we are going to talk about Scala Cats and two of its main type classes, which are semigroups and monoids. So, get ready to dive into Scala Cats to explore this functional library of Scala. Before diving in, I want to thank Nolders for providing me this opportunity for sharing knowledge with all of you. Nolders is a team of passionate technologists with a product mindset who work along with businesses to deliver solution at the speed of competitive advantage. Our main capabilities are around reactive products, IoT, microservices and API, data science, data engineering and DevOps. We also have our strategic partnership with Databricks, Lightbin, Confluence, Snowflake and many more to deliver more value to clients. Okay, so let's talk about this session's agenda first. We will start with introduction of CATS and then we will talk about what are type classes and what are its components. Then we will study about two of the core type classes of CATS that is semigroups and monoids. We are going to talk about what are semigroups, associativity law followed by semigroups, limitation of semigroups and then we will proceed with the demo on semigroups. Similarly, we are going to talk about what are monoids, why we need monoids, associativity and identity laws followed by monoids, and then we will move forward to demo on monoids, and then we will wrap this webinar. Okay, so let's start with the introduction first. Okay, so what is GAPS? CATS is a library which provides abstraction for functional programming in the Scala programming language. The name CATS is a playful shortening of the word category. CATS is a lightweight, modular and extensible library for functional programming. CATS contain a wide variety of functional programming tools and allow developers to pick and choose the one that we want to use. The majority of these tools are delivered in the form of type classes that we can apply to existing Scala types. CATS bring abstraction to the Scala ecosystem. If you have heard of the terms like type classes, monads, monoids, applicatives, functors, those are the abstractions that we are talking about. So let's take a look at how to use the type classes uh, using the GAPS library. So let's start with the type classes first. Type classes are a programming pattern originating in Haskell they allow us to extend, extend existing libraries with new functionality without using traditional inheritance and without altering the original library source code. So there are three important components to the type class pattern. First, the type class itself. Second, the instances for a particular type and third, the methods that use type classes. So type classes in Scala, they are implemented using implicit values and parameters and optionally using implicit classes. So Scala language construct correspond to the component of type classes like uh, uh, we have traits which are the type classes, we have implicit values which are the type class instances and then we have implicit parameters which are the type class usage. So let's see how this works in detail. Okay, so the first component is type class itself. A type class is an interface or API that represents some functionality we want to implement. In Scala, a type class is represented by a trait with at least one type parameter. For example, we can represent, uh, represent generic serialized to JSON behavior like this. Uh, as you can see here, JSON writer is our type class in this example. So when we come to implement instances of JSON writer, the type parameter A will be the complete type of data we are writing. Okay, and the second component of type class is the type class instances. So uh, the instance of a type class, it provides implementation of the type class for specific types we care about. So which can include types from Scala standard library and types from our own domain model. So in Scala, we define instances by creating concrete implementation of the type class and tagging them with the implicit keyword. So these are known as implicit values. 
as you can see here in the example uh, we had our json writer type class right so uh, this is our type class uh, instance for type string so you can see that i have implemented that json writer type class uh, for a particular type that is string okay and using the implicit keyword so this is my implicit value third component of type class is type class usage a type class use is any functionality that requires a type class instance to work in scala this means any method that accept instances of type class as implicit parameters so cats provide utilities that make type classes easier to use and you will sometimes see see these patterns in other libraries also so we can do this using interface objects okay so the simplest way of creating an interface that uses a type class is to place methods in a singleton object so as you can see here i created a singleton object json and uh, i placed my method for example to json method here in this singleton object and this to json method it's using my type class uh, json writer okay and to uh, use these interface objects we import any type class instance we care about and call the relevant method so the compiler it spot that we have called the to json method without providing the implicit parameters it tries to fix this by searching for type class instances of the relevant type and inserting them at the call side so as you can see here i had this json uh, singleton object i called it called its uh, to json method okay and i'm providing my person type here right so it will uh, take the it will automatically uh, take find find and take the relevant uh, type class instance whichever is required at this point okay now let's talk about two of the core type classes provided by cats those are semi groups and monoids so let's dive into them okay so type classes they are a programming pattern originating in haskell i already told you about that so in haskell we have a concept of monoid haskell's monoid is split into semi groups and monoids in cats so they are also type aliases of algebra dot semi group and algebra dot monoid in category theory so semi groups is a weaker version of monoids you can say that so let's see how So let's come to the first part of the session that is semi groups. Okay. So in functional programming terms, a semi group is a concept which encapsulate aggregation with associative binary operation. So mark these words aggregation, associative and binary. I'll explain them later. So semi group type class it comes with a method combine that combines two values of same data type by following the principle of associativity so that's what semi group is now let's see how exactly this combined method of semi group behaves so as you can see here semi group type class defines combined method like this it takes two parameters of same data type for example a and performs associative binary operation and provides result of same data type a so now notice we have two operands here x and y that's why it is said that combined method performs binary operation and it perform binary operation on these two operands and uh, going to return a res the result of same data type that is a So now let's see how exactly combined method follows associativity as associativity is the only law for semi groups let's see how the combined method of semi groups it holds associativity that means the following equality which is mentioned here it must hold true for any choice of x y and z so if we combine result of y and z with x 
it should produce same result if we combine result of x and y with z. So this is how combine follows associativity. Now, why is the associative requirement so important? At this stage, you might be wondering what all this fuss is about, right? So, associativity, it allows us to partition the data in whatever way we want and parallelize the, parallelize the operations, okay? For example, we have given a list of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, we can simply combine the result of 1 and 2 and store it somewhere. Then we can combine the result of 3 and 4 and store it somewhere. Then we can combine the result of group 1 and 2 and store it somewhere. Now we can get our final result by simply combining the groups group 3 and group 5. So in this way, semigroups allow us to parallelize the operation on large and small data sets and then combine the results together. Now, CATS include semigroup implementations for most of the common types in Scala ecosystem like ints, st uh, strings, list, etc. So, most of the times, this behavior is predictable and obvious. For example, combined implementation for int will add two parameters and string implementation will concatenate them, right? So, what if I want to multiply two numbers? Now we can easily write our own implementation. So let's see how. Okay, so uh, if, we, if we talk about a same group of type integer, so this is how we can achieve uh, the custom implementation for a same group of type int. So as you can see here, I have provided my own implementation of combined method, right? Now when combine is called, rather than using its default implementation that would be addition, it will use this custom implementation and will do multiplication, okay? So it will give me 2 multiplied by 2 rather than 2 plus 2, okay? So we can easily provide our own implementation of combined method. Okay, now Scala 2.12, it allows us to use Java's single abstract method pattern. So if we are using Scala 2.12 and Java 8, we can do something like this. Like we can provide implementation of combined method in much more concise manner. So cats include a factory function to make the code a bit more verbose. So as you can see, I have provided you various options in which you can provide the implementation of combined method in a very concise manner, right? Okay, now let's talk about semigroups of type string. So now, as I already mentioned, CAT's implementation for strings, it concatenates the two parameters, right? But it does not include a space between them. So the, this default implementation is not much useful as we want the space, of course. So we can provide our own implementation and bring that space. So now when combine is called, it will provide a space between the strings. See, I have provided my own custom implementation. As you can see here, that it will provide the space between the strings while concatenating them. So easy. Now since semigroups they follow associativity, given that associative constraint, we can build more useful constructs from the simple combined method. Now we can use recursion directly or we can use Scala's fold method to operate on collection of values. Right? So talking about semigroups of collection type, so as you can see here, we are using Scala's fold lift to combine all elements presented present in a sequence of string. Okay, so however, given just semigroup, we cannot write the above expression generically. Let's see why. Let's see why. Um, okay, so uh, just uh, notice that uh, what we are doing here is that we have a sequence of string and uh, we are providing the combined operation over the sequence of string using the full lift method of Scala. So we cannot write this expression generically. Let's see how. So let's study about this limitation of semigroup that we cannot write the expression mentioned in the last slide generically. Okay, so notice 
as how in earlier case we need to pass a default or fallback value right for example if you are using collection of strings we need to pass default value as empty string and if we are using collection of integers maybe we need to pass fallback value as zero right so this limitation means that we cannot write a generic method like uh, combine all where it is taking a sequence of generic type a so we cannot write a generic method like this because the fallback value will depend on the type of a of course so for example if you are using strings we need to provide empty string as a fallback value and if you are using ints we need to provide zero as a fallback value so this is a big limitation of semi groups but do we but we do have a solution to this problem that is called monoid okay so before proceeding to monoids let's do a short demo on semi groups So as you can see here, I have this semigroup of type int. Okay, I am performing combine operation over the semigroup and passing two integers over it. Okay, now uh, it will perform its default implementation and will add these two integers. Okay, so for example, if we like uh, if we call this default in semigroup method of in semigroup this is my in semigroup object and this is my default in semigroup method if i'm gonna call this method with let's say parameter one and two so it's gonna be int one is one int two is two and what is going to happen is that we will combine these one and two and the result would be three of course one plus two right it will perform the default implementation so if i run this test it's gonna pass it passed okay great now if we talk about string semigroup okay so for example if we have a semigroup of type string and we perform combine operation over the semigroup and pass two string parameters over it so what is going to happen in this case that it will concatenate these two strings without a space between them okay so for example i have mansi and babbar and if i pass these two parameters to this method default string semigroup it's gonna combine it's gonna concatenate these two strings without a space between them so it's gonna give me one semigroup so if i'm gonna run this test it will pass of course okay now if i uh, like let's talk about custom in semigroup so as you as you saw in the case of in semigroup we had this default implementation of addition of two integers right now what if i want to multiply two integers so what i will do is i will take a semigroup of type int i will perform the combine operation over these two integers and what i have done here is i have provided my custom implementation that if in case if we have a semigroup of type int and if we have two parameters two integers we are going to multiply those integers so now what will happen is when this combine method is called it will uh, do the multiplication of these two integers rather than adding them okay so for example here if i call the multiply method of custom in semigroup multiply method of custom in semigroup so what will happen in this case is that if i will pass 2 and 3 it's gonna do it's gonna return me six rather than returning me five so this is how we can write our own implementation for combined method okay now if we talk about custom se uh, string semigroup yeah so in uh, in the default implementation of uh, string semigroup we were concatenating the two strings right without a space between them so now we can provide our own implementation for combine like we have if we have a uh, same group of type string what we can do is we can simply concatenate the strings with a space between them so now when this combine will be called it will uh, use this implementation rather than its default implementation so if you go to this custom string semigroup 
if I call the concatenate string method, string with space method of custom string semigroup. This is custom string semigroup. This is concatenate string with space method. If I'm gonna call this with mansi and bubber, it's gonna give me mansi space bubber rather than mansi bubber uh, without a space. Okay, this is how it's gonna work. Now, if we have a collection semigroup, okay. So uh, now if I have a sequence of string, okay, and if I use a full left method of Scala, and if I, and I provide a fallback value that is empty string here, okay, so what it will do is, it will uh, perform the combine operation over that sequence of string and will combine all the, and will concatenate all the strings, okay. So here, as you can see, I'm calling the combined strings method of collection semigroup. So this is my collection semigroup. This is my combined strings method. And I'm providing this sequence of string. Okay. Welcome to the world of programming. And what it should return me? It should return me this. Welcome to the world of programming without a space between them. Because of course, it's using its default implementation. Okay. Now if I run this test case, it will pass. Passed. Okay. So this is how it's going to work. Moving back to the slides. Okay, so now let's come to the another main part of this session that is monoids. Okay, so what are monoids? A monoid, it extends semigroup and add a default or fallback value for a given time. We will see how. So it allows us to combine empty data types so long as we have a monoid instance, okay? So monoid type class, it comes with two methods. One is combined method of semigroups as it inherits semigroup and another method is its own empty method that performs identity operation. So now the question arises, why do we need to use monoids? We have, now we have two strong reasons to use monoids. Let's see what are those. Okay. So the first reason is that we often need to combine data types that may be empty. For example, empty list or options, we need to combine these data types. So how are we going to do that? For example, how do we combine list of integers to produce an int if the list is empty? And how do we combine list of strings to produce a string if the list is empty? Right. Logically, we would expect zero for ints and empty string for strings, but how do we represent this? Now, monoid are used for this issue, okay? Another main reason to use monoid is that in topic of semigroups, we were using semigroups along with Scala's fold to operate on collection of values, right? So we discussed the limitation of semigroups where we cannot write a generic method combine all by passing a sequence of generic type A to combine all the elements of that generic type, right? We cannot write a generic method for this because we need to provide a fallback value and that fallback value is going to depend on the type of A. So of course, we cannot write a generic method, right? So in case of strings, we need to provide empty string as fallback value. In case of ints, we need to provide zero as fallback value. So that was the issue, right? So monoid comes up with a solution to this shortcoming by introducing an identity or empty element. So let's see what exactly it is. Okay. So now let's see uh, how exactly this identity or empty element behaves. Okay. Okay. So a monoid is simply a semigroup with an empty element. That's a perfect de definition uh, for monoid. It's a sim. It's it's a semigroup with an add-on and that add-on is an empty element. So let's look at the signature of monoid type class. So we can represent monoid in two ways. Either we can extend semigroup or we can define both combined and empty methods. Okay. So I have uh, demonstrated both the implementations here. Like it extends semigroup and uh, defining the empty method. And if it's not extending the semigroup, it's defining both the combined and empty method. Okay. So now let's see why exactly we need this empty method, okay? okay. So uh, this empty string, 
that is passed in combined strings method it is known as identity or empty value okay so uh, we can think of it as a default or fallback value right it resolves the shortcoming of semi crops so we can easily provide the implementation of generic method combine all by passing sequence of generic type using monoid okay so as you can see here we have a method combine all we are passing a sequence of generic type here okay we are specifying a monoid of generic type a okay and now when we will call fourth left method on sequence of this generic type we will pass monoid dot empty rather than passing a default or fallback value and then we will call the combine method of monoid so this is how we can resolve the shortcoming of semi groups okay since semi groups they follow the principle of associativity now same rule uh, with some add ons are applied to monoids as well so monoids they follow the same principle of associativity followed by semi groups but monoids they also follow the identity law as we have the identity element in monoids okay so uh, if we talk about monoids with associativity and identity laws so as you can see here the combine operation it has to be associative we talked about it right so an empty and uh, the empty value it should be an identity for the combine operation okay so let's look at look at some examples here if we combine x with empty and if we combine empty with x it should be same as x to satisfy the identity law okay now if we perform 2 into 1 and 1 into 2 it's going to be same as 2 because uh, for integer multiplication one act as identity element so the law is valid here okay but we cannot do this with zero because zero is not implied here as identity element so this will break the rule okay thus it's clear that empty or identity element depend on context and not on Type. So that's why monoids and semi-group implementations they are not specific. They are uh, specific not only to the type but also to the combine operation. Okay. So cats it allow combining monoid monoids together to form bigger monoids and write more generalized function which will take something composable instead of some concrete type. Okay. that's what we talk about, right? We can write a generalized function and we can pass generic types rather than some specific types okay so that's how monoids follow the associativity and identity law okay so let's move on to the demo on monoids okay so okay so if we talk about uh the monoid for a collection okay so what we are doing here is for example we have a sequence of generic type a okay we can use monoid for this okay and uh, we have specified a monoid here of type of same generic type a okay now if we perform uh, scalar's whole left method over this collection okay and in the fallback value we are going to pass monoid dot empty okay so what it will do is uh, for example if the generic type is int it will take the uh zero as the fallback value if the generic type is string it will take the empty string as the fa fallback value so we are basically simply providing the monoid dot empty here okay and then we can simply call monoid dot combine so if it's uh, if the generic if the type is integer it gonna add all the numbers and if the type is string it gonna concatenate all the strings okay this this is how it's gonna work so if we look at it here For example, um, I have a sequence of string. Okay, this is my sequence of string, and this is what I expect the result. Okay, the strings should be concatenated. Now, if I call the combine all method of collection monoid, this is my collection monoid. This is my combine all method, and if I pass that sequence of string over here, what will happen is it will uh, define the monoid for that particular type string. okay and uh, it's going to call the full left method over that collection 
it's gonna take uh, since we are passing monoid dot empty here so it's gonna take an empty string here and uh, since we are calling monoid monoid dot empty here combine here so it's gonna simply combine concatenate the strings okay so as you can see here if i'm calling the combine all method with the sequence of string i'm gonna get this string okay and if i run this test it's gonna pass Past. Great. Now, similarly, if I have a sequence of integers, okay, and this is what I expect, the summation of these integers, okay. Now, notice that I'm calling the same method combine all of collection monoid, same method combine all, I'm calling this method, okay, with the sequence of integers. So, now what will happen is, it will define a monoid of type integer. It will uh, call the full left method over that collection. It's gonna, uh, since we are calling monoid.empty here, it's gonna pass the zero as fallback value. And we are calling monoid.combine here, it's gonna add all the numbers. It will perform its default implementation, okay? So, uh, this is what I'm doing, calling the combine all, passing the sequence of numbers and expect this to be the answer. So, let's see. Past. Great. So this is how it's going to work. Moving on to the slides. Okay. So um, these are some of the references. You can also check out my articles and templates on cats. They are available on Maldus blogs and uh, Maldus sticker. I have added the link. I have added the link also here. So thus, this is it. Thank you so much for listening to me. Have a nice day.